Hi, check out what I scored on eBay for 99 Yankee bucks. Oh, isn't a thing of beauty. Joy forever. A Fluke PM3370B combi scope, dual analog and digital jobby. Um, 200 meg samples per second. Uh, don't worry about that uh, 10 gig sample per second repetitive equivalent time sampling rubbish. That's just garbage. But uh, 200 meg samples per second, uh, not too shabby. It's got uh, two 60 megahertz um, analog channels. This does actually come in a four channel uh, version. It's only got 8K of digital uh, memory, but still a very very useful scope and if it works it's an absolute bargain for 99 US dollars it was sold for um, as uh, non-working parts only can you get anything better on eBay for under a hundred bucks possibly not and this thing is absolute gorgeous uh, condition you know, it's got a couple of little marks on there but absolutely fantastic it's got the cowl seal on it like this um, and the BNC is looking really good condition the tilting bale here absolutely fantastic Nick so it looks like it hasn't had much use at all so I'm hoping that this thing uh, works now I don't believe it uh, I have to check but I don't believe it came from a professional test equipment uh, seller and I've got a, a an exclusive video on my Odyssey uh, channel and also supporters have uh, seen this video as well where I unbox this thing and I uh, interesting story about the courier driver who actually delivered this thing anyway this is actually not a fluke this is actually a Phillips um, and I might have to do a separate video on uh, the original PM3370, this is the B model, but the original 3370 actually dates from 1970. And it's an old school analog one, but I found this glorious document. I'm uh, Yeah, I'll definitely do a separate video on this. I'll uh, link it in after the fact. And the back's in fantastic nick. Look at this. It's got the GPIB and uh, RS-232 interface as well. Full remote control, which you can uh, do via the RS-232 uh, interface. Sadly, it doesn't have um, any of the extra functions. It does have the Z-axis uh, intensity modulation, which is uh, fantastic if you're for all you Lissagis uh, figure XY mode uh, fanboys and you can do some great stuff when you um, add an external signal to vary the analog intensity of the beam which is fantastic um, doesn't have any gating output or anything like that there is an external trigger input because on the four channel model the external trigger is not on the front it's on the rear and it's got a memory backup here, uh, which is not the uh, calibration. It's just like the user, like the last user settings. And well, uh, yeah, these have uh, seen better days. And I would hazard a guess that these are the original batteries that were in there, made in Holland. Thank you very much, as is the scope. Ah, oh, beautiful. Anyway, it does have a uh, universal switch in supply, so um, I'm just going to, rather than take this apart, I'm just super keen to actually power this thing up. I don't know what that is down in there. It's, uh, no. Right, so let's power this bad boy up and see what I got for my 99 Yankee bucks. Let's see if she goes bang. Um, hopefully it doesn't have any uh, reefer madness uh, capacitors in there, but fingers crossed, here we go. Oh, it beeped. Fan. That That's good. Beep, beep. I did take the batteries out. Anything on the screen? Intense trace intensity. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Text, text intensity. It's coming up. The focus, the text focus is a bit. Oh, no, no, it's, it's coming in. It's text focus is coming in. Oh, that's beautiful. And this is all digital. Have a listen to this. You can hear the focus beeping like that. So this is a multi-turn thing. Oh, that screen is sharp as a tack. Look at that. Wow, I have no doubt this thing, like it's highly unlikely, you know, once you get a scope, if you get it on eBay and if you can see like photos of um, the item and at least if it has a sweep on there, um, you know, it's a good bet that you're not going to have, say, two failed uh, vertical channels, uh, for example. So it's a good bet that one of the vertical channels is going to work, especially if you're getting the text and you know all the digital um, stuff is going to be working and it's likely all the digital sampling, it's likely this thing is 100% working i'd be very surprised if i find anything failed on this so yeah this is just gorgeous
probe adjust. <laughs> Winner. There's our position. Once again, this is digital. It's going beepity beep beep beep. And in fact, that's rather annoying. I'm going to like, and we can turn our text on and off too. Oh, there we go. So we've got all our menu and everything else. Amplitude, yeah, it's buttons. It doesn't have like old school knobs for your um, horizontal and your vertical. So, meh, you, you, but you get what you get and you don't get upset for your hundred Yankee bucks. So, there we go. Look at that. That is a winner. Whoa! Whoa, it just died. Oh! Did you see it? It just switched off. There's no... the magic smoke. Hang on. No? Oh! Are you kidding me? It, I was just bragging that this how good this sucker was. Oh, I thought I had a winner winner chicken dinner. I was bragging. Ah! Oh. Come a gutsa. Here we go. I'll try it again. Okay. That sounds good. She's come back. Not a problem. So, yeah. So it looks like... And it's got delayed time base too. Very nice. So if I leave this running, I wonder if it'll um, just cark it again. So it looks like it does have some sort of like a potential power supply issue. What's TB mode? Oh, time, ba time base mode. Okay. Right. Alt chop. Okay. Yep. Auto single. All that sort of jazz. Um, run, stop, switch to digital. So let, let's actually try the digital, actually. So there's our single shot. We're still in analog mode here. There we go. We're in digital mode. You can see the samples on there. Can I actually magnify? Yep, yep, I can magnify that. And look, it's showing how much memory. It's showing the memory and the position as well. Isn't that beautiful? This is a very nice combi scope. I like it. Still very handy. It's only got 8K of memory, but that, you know... It's good enough for Australia, that's all you need. Jeez, when I was a boy, like, that's not much more than the 16... And that's only half of the 16K that came with my original Rigol DS1052E scope, which had 16K. Uh, this one actually does go up to... In the other models in this uh, series, the 4-channel ones, does go up to 32K. This one's got 8K, I believe. And we've got measurements as well. We've got cursors, peak on-off, bandwidth limit, envelope uh, on-off. Yep, that's analog. And... That's digital. There you go. That's digital mode. Updating. Fantastic. You can see how digital mode, a bit more noisier than the old uh, analog. I've done a video uh, explaining why digital scopes are noisier, in quote marks. Okay, it's been like a few minutes. It hasn't died on me yet. Graticule illumination, does that work? Turn my studio lights off. Yeah, it's there. Jeez, you can barely, I can barely see it up the top there in the shadow. <laughs> Jeez, you'd have to really be in the dark. So, look, I can measure the frequency, uh, peak to peak, there you go, 58 millivolts peak to peak, fantastic. Cursor limit and statistics, it can do pass-fail testing, oh wow, I'm going to have to RTFM on that, and cursor limit statistics as well. This has got some really advanced stuff in it. This is a really powerful combi scope. This would, hands up if you used one of these um, back in the mid-90s, um, yeah. I would have killed to have one of these back then. Jeez. And I can actually get uh, statistics on the uh, peak as well. Check that out. But of course, all that vanishes once you're in analog mode. You've got to go into your digitals. So we can go average mode. There we go. I've just smoothed that out with eight averages. And it's very fast updating too. I like it. And we can get peak, peak detect, which makes it look fuzzier, of course. It's going to detect the peaks. Bandwidth limit, um, that's the 20 megahertz bandwidth limit. 20 megahertz bandwidth limit, because that's become the de facto standard for, like, power supply uh, noise measurement over the 20 megahertz range. Um, that's one of the main uh, features. So it's just like a de facto standard thing. Anyway, is there, like, a dodgy cap in there or something like that? We'll have to do a uh, teardown video and maybe... Well, there, there it goes. There it goes, I got it. I, I can hear it. There's a real high frequency repetitive thing. And you saw how all the high voltage CRT stuff actually collapsed in there and um, stuff like that. So it's, you know, there's something over time is causing that. There we go, fans kicked in. All the, all the relays went, click. Yeah, there's a slight issue with the power supply. So this will not be a repair video. This is just, look what I scored for 99 Yankee bucks. That's interesting because the batteries would hold the digital focus 
settings, right? That's why I don't have the battery back up in the back, so it doesn't hold the focus and the intensity and trace and all that sort of stuff, which is all done digitally. So when you power it up, you've got to reset it back to normal. So it's not an analog scope in that actual respect. Works as an analog scope, but it's got like digital uh, controls, whereas these would normally be like single turn uh, focus control and, and oh, hey, there it goes again. Yeah, nah, it's not going to last that long. Well, got it open and look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Um, all Nippon Chemicon caps in there in the power supply. Um, it looks like we've got a motherboard uh, down the bottom. A nice deep CRT. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we've got um, two main uh, like processor uh, digitally, uh, you know, one might handle the display or something like that. That's a beast. We're going to have a look at that big uh, ceramic processor. It's got a DSP. There's some off-board um, coaxes here. Very nice. So anyway, what we're interested in is the power supply up here. And there's, oh, it's just, it's beautiful. And there's no dust in this sucker whatsoever. There's our mains input over there. Little bit uh, exposed, but you know, she'll be right. That was a sign of the times back then. I love the baseboard on the CRT. Look at the ribbon cable coming out of that. And there's... Check out that driver on top, that driver board. That's fantastic. It's got three Phillips jobbies, of course. They're Phillips parts. Phillips, if you don't know, almost like every component used in like modern uh, TVs and CRTs and stuff like that. So, um, and they invented I squared C, of course. It's Phillips, you know, trademark, I squared C. So yeah, they did absolutely everything. So you'll find a lot of uh, Phillips um, silicon in this, I'm sure, but. Anyway, look, the fan's got its own nice little compartment over here. This is all just beautiful. This is all, looks like one big injection molded plastic piece, actually, to try and keep the weight down. That's very nice. In fact, all of the uh, chassis here is all plastic. Um, it, does it have a metal uh, base? There's the base of it. Um, there's a little bit of metal up here, but yeah, basically. Anyway, um, there's all your uh, vertical stuff and look at it all compartmentalized look at this um you know, it's all labeled look at this dso gate delay line down here we've got alt in and look um as i said like like all phillips parts right these are all probably um like custom phillips silicon for this thing um yeah in fact every single chip on there so far is Philips. This is how big Philips are, were. Um, yeah, they just made absolutely everything. Anyway, um, yes, this is the physical, uh, they use an actual analog delay line here, old school, just to delay the uh, time of flight um, in this thing. Um, none of that digital rubbish. But yeah, that is just a beautiful example of a PCB layout that they've gone to the effort to put in and they've numbered look one two three four so row and column so then in the service manual so you can say oh the chip in d1 failed or whatever it's just ah brilliant okay so i want that power supply board uh, looks like they've cable tied that in so nobody's gotten into this thing before so i'm going to break into there and uh get it out have a squeeze because you want to get the whole thing out uh to give it a visual my only criticism with this is that there's no ejector um, handles to get them out nicely. So you wouldn't believe it. All this beautiful design There's a sneaky pain in the ass plastic clip right up under there. You can't see. And another one right up under there. You can't see. Yeah, pain in the ass clips to get that power supply board out. Oh, I can't even see the clip. Whew. Finally got it, but ah, oh, that was worth it. Isn't this thing beautiful? Look at it. Ah, oh, it's bright and shiny. You ever seen that many shiny Nippon Chemicons? Ah, oh. you'll be pleased to know there is no reefer madness in this thing, so it ain't that. Anyway, I've had a fairly decent visual over this board, and I am not seeing anything yet. I'll have yet another visual, but then I'll have to start measuring stuff and then i might have to go to the schematic we have the full schematic and something is uh like failing after some time and the other thing is like there's no convenient test points like on the top of this board so like measuring stuff while it's like in circuit and powered up in the chassis that's actually going to be hard anyway i asked in uh, today's live stream i do a live stream every saturday and um, everyone said oh look leave the repair to a separate video so i will sorry
And there's nothing obvious on the bottom either, so yeah, not seeing it. I'll just briefly uh, show you the other boards here because there's some interesting stuff. This is uh, the main acquisition board. Obviously, look at these gorgeous color-coded off-board coax connectors here. Um, absolutely fantastic. They're all color-coded. The wiring, the matching cables have color codes in them. Absolutely beautiful. They're down here as well. There's a couple more over here. And um, these are obviously our signal in coming in from the uh, front end. These two are obviously the analog to digital converters. There's a two-channel. Uh, this is a two-channel model. So you'd have another board uh, for that. And um, then it looks like you might have some latching. Haven't looked at uh, part numbers here. But um, there's some other custom uh, Phillips parts down here. I don't know. That might have something to do with the triggering or something. Don't know. Not going to look into the details. But look at this jobby. This is a custom ASIC. I guess they call it Dalek. Uh, and then we've got the sample memory here. These are uh, 2K SRAMs a pop. And there's matching ones on the bottom there as well. Genuine bodge. I'll show you another bodge in a minute. But isn't this a fascinating package? This is none of that BGA rubbish, right? This is a pin grid array. Okay, fantastic. But check it out. They've got two bypass caps on on top of the ceramic like that. Is that how big the die is? I can sort of like see a mark in there. But yeah, isn't that fascinating? They must have had um, like the embedded uh, pads in there going through the ceramic um, to the inner um, layers. So yeah, <laughs> fantastic, huh? Have you ever seen that before? And then after the memory, we've got a what looks like a, um, a bat batch. Um, I assume that's a code name for yet another custom ASIC. So what, this, what that's doing there, I don't know. Um, another Phil's part and a TI-320 DSP processor. Everyone goes wild. Yep, more Phillips. Phillips, Phillips, Phillips. Now, I don't know what these things are. It's almost as if, would they be like maybe uh, delay lines or something? Digital delay lines? I don't. I don't really know. If you do, leave it in comments down below. Anyway, date code of uh, most of these chips um, dates from 1999. So, yeah, this thing would have been built late 99, early 2000. Check out these bodges here. I posted this on Twitter. Isn't it gorgeous? They obviously decided that this needed a bit of shielding and they've put it down to a couple of ears here and a pad over here and stuff. And they've done it with that chip up there too. So that's, that's the bodge of the week. And eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed all the uh, right angle traces and everything like this on here. This part of uh, the layout is obviously auto-routed because a no human could, would, could possibly route traces like that. So yeah, um, it could have a combination of auto and manual routing. And then our other card here, uh, this is just IO. So this is our uh, GPIB and uh, serial GPIB connector and serial um, interface there. I don't know what the missing chippy is. Th that looks like our flash um, uh, memory, our flash uh, like operating system. There's nothing else much doing there. There's a couple of Mitsubishi parts. Uh, yeah, some more Philips. Jobbies, that's the IEEE and uh, serial interfaces, but yeah. And I showed you that CRT driver before as well. That's just gorgeous. And then the uh, neck board as well. Very nice. It's buried away. I won't get it out, but there you go. It's just a brief uh, teardown. This is not meant to be a teardown. It was just a, hey, look what I found. Scored for under a hundred bucks on eBay. And you can find these too. Do your research. Find some old scopes that you like. Search for not only uh, working scopes, but also search for parts, non-working scopes, because often they will list them without knowing, you know, or they just just don't want the hassle of you, you know, actually returning them. Because if you buy it, parts not working, then you can't actually return the thing. Um, so yeah, but in this case, um, it's fully working apart from um, the power supply just dying after, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And with a bit of work, I'm sure we can uh, fix that up. So there you go. So that's almost a winner winner chicken dinner. But uh, anyway, that is a very good score for under a hundred bucks. Let us know in the comments down below what, uh, if you've scored a scope, for under a hundred bucks. Can you beat this one? But it might be hard to beat this 22 year old combi scope. It's still, you know, a reasonably serious and useful bit of kit. So anyway, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.